Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at chapter three of A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. Uh, and with that said, we're going to open up with a passage as we usually do on this channel. Mosscap leaned back, noticing the armrests for the first time. Are these for arms? Yes. Mosscap stretched out its arms, bent them deliberately, and set them down with a chuckle. Sorry, there's just so much here to experience, I keep getting distracted. I wouldn't have guessed that robots got distracted. Why not? Well, can't you, I don't know, run programs in the background or something? Mosscap's eyes adjusted their focus. You understand how resource-heavy consciousness is, yes? No, I can't do that any more than you can. But we're getting off track. To the point. I was sent here to answer the following question. What do you humans need? Dex blinked. That's a question with a million answers. In Chapter 3 of A Psalm for the Wild Built, we get our first encounter between Mosscap and Dex. Mosscap initially fumbles with the greeting and Dex is rather taken aback by the whole situation. However, after Dex is able to get dressed and eat a meal, they're able to begin talking. Dex learns that Mosscap has come back to help fulfill the parting promise. While Mosscap is interested in all things related to humans and how human society has changed after the robots left, it compares its purpose to a checkup, uh, it's mainly interested in answering the question of what do humans need. Mosscap is thrilled to discover that Dex is a tea monk as this seems like the perfect person to help Mosscap learn from different villages and different peoples. Dex is slightly surprised that Mosscap knows of the Six Gods, but does not pry much further. Overall, the interaction between the two only causes Dex to have further questions. Ultimately, Mosscap proposes that it helps escort Dex in exchange for Dex explaining to it the updates to human society, since the robots have departed. The chapter ends as a bear approaches the wagon, and while Dex was initially wary of taking the robot up on its offer, the bear startles them into agreeing. Mosscap finds the experience with the bear thrilling rather than terrifying, and this chapter of course does a great job of characterizing both of our main protagonists. So, uh, some notes on the chapter. Um, obviously, you know, the bear appearing at the end is in many ways fitting with kind of the bear symbolism we've already seen in the story, that the bear is kind of the symbol for the child god Alele, the god of kind of small comforts, right? And it pushes them on this journey. But we can also think of kind of how bears are represented in not only pop culture, but mythology around the world, right? So bear worship has been a thing in many different societies um, throughout human history, whether it's um, ancient bear bones being found in caves or worship of them. Um, it's been uh, something that's relatively well documented. Um, and so there's kind of this this grandiosity to the animal. Additionally, we also want to think about kind of more contemporary pop culture associations with uh, bears. Bears, of course, you know, we think um, some people think of them as like ferocious big animals. Uh, some people think of them as like lumbering teddy bears as like a soft teddy bear, right? Um, but also one thing that's often associated with bears is kind of the food they eat. Um, whether that's eating honey, like a Winnie the Pooh type character, uh, whether that's uh, chewing on berries or catching fish in a river, um, they have these kind of small comforts, these various different foods that a lot of people like uh, that bears also like and are kind of more well known for enjoying. And of course, um, all these associations are tied up as we're reading the story. And so the God of Cult small comforts in that way is kind of pushing Dex into this uncomfortable territory. Um, after all, it's kind of a small comfort in a way to have uh, Mosscap on the journey. Uh, this chapter also deals a lot with social mannerisms, whether that's Dex being naked when they encounter each other or Mosscap opening up its chest panels. Um, it really kind of doesn't, you know, question these social norms as much as it does kind of point out that it's not going to be all smooth sailing between these two because um, neither of them has interacted with the other party before necessarily and that there may be all sorts of social faux pas that they might have to work through. So to kind of tie up this video, uh, let's talk about one of our big questions for the chapter. One of the big questions of this story is why is the god of small comforts represented by the great summer bear? Now we talked about bears a little bit, um, but you might want to think about what are the words great and summer bear kind of bring to mind, or specifically just the great summer bear in general. Uh, what other symbolic associations are there with this animal? And why, what do you think of when you think of small comforts? Why worship small comforts? Why make a god of it? As always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. With that said, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the video for chapter four. Thanks.